Hey there, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto, taking a look at a 1993 Honda Acti Street. This one here, a K-Van, but the street version, so the more pedestrian version of it. This is a limited model, so it has a few little differences in it. I love it. I love the K-Trucks, K-Vans, they're okay. I love this one. The limited version of it has some of what I love so much about the 1980s. It's like, I don't know. Honda, amazing cars. Honda of the 80s, even more amazing in my opinion. And uh, this one, I got happy and excited, which is something I rarely do for K-Vans. Okay, so quick look at the vehicle here. Uh, the street version, by the way, has uh, body color surrounds for the headlights instead of black. You get a slightly different bumper. I believe the Limited comes with the fog lights. And I gotta say, I adore the look of something boxy with yellow fog lights. You know, if you like Initial D, then that car definitely has that, but it was just a thing in Japan to have rectangular yellow fog lights on the premium versions or the upgraded versions or even for the aftermarket. And I think it just, it fits so nicely for the aesthetic. Uh, this one also, and I'm supposed to be doing the auction inspection sheet here. I gotta say these things. Wheels, I have something to mention about those. <laughs> Incredibly cool. Limited sticker on the back, very period correct. And the interior has a few different things like the moquette seats, which is, I actually had to look up this word. I don't know what it means, but that is an English word. Uh, it's a, some sort of a fabric. Okay, so let's go over the sheet here. It's a 1993 Acti Street G Limited. Auction grade four with an interior B and an exterior C. 142, 587 kilometers is quite high for a K vehicle, but the, the condition of this looks phenomenal considering the mileage. If this actually read 50,000 kilometers, I would say, wow, this looks great, but it looks authentic. I love when that happens. I love when you get a high mileage car, but it turns out to be in better condition than you're assuming. Five-speed manual, AC, no power steering, no power windows, a very simple type of vehicle, so nothing to really go wrong. Known to be fairly reliable, very good on gas, and a huge interior for such a small vehicle. You can either use it for tons of cargo space in the back, or you can comfortably fit four people, as long as there's nobody over six feet tall. Uh, back seats, really not that much of a problem. Front seats, anyone over six feet is going to be feeling pretty cramped. Okay, so sales points here, moquette seats real-time four-wheel drive and a five-speed manual. Some uh, first-time at auction. A wooden aftermarket steering wheel. Windshield rock chip. Interior dirty. Winter tires. Various scratches and dents. Underside surface rust and painted. And then the body looking clean around it. The only thing are level one parts of damage. Like A1 is a very small scratch. A1 very small scratch. And the back hatch has been repainted. Okay, so let's do a once around of the body. Oh, and uh, these mirrors, love them. They're like a, they're like a big industrial van's mirrors, but on a tiny little toaster vehicle like this. Okay, so walk around here. The Acti, I think, is my favorite of all of the K-Vans. Um, I, just, I just love Honda, especially their earlier stuff. And uh, reminds me of things like the Honda City, or the Civics, or even the first gen Integra. I think this tailpipe is uh, original, and that mud flap, of course, is. Uh, about the wheels and tires. Okay, so this car is 142,000 kilometers. There's no way these tires are the original ones because these tires come from 1992, and they still have plenty of tread left on them. And then these wheels, look at how nice that is. Hasn't ever been repainted. That's the original finish on the wheel. It's glossy, and but like a satin gloss and you just really don't see this clean of a wheel. And when you combine it with the things like the fog lights in the front and you know, the fact that it's a K-Van, those wheels are just epically good looking. I don't know, the attention, so for me, when I see a car, something like that, something a little bit different, something that's hard for the average person to appreciate, really pushes the right buttons for me. And then the back says Street G Limited. It's missing the D for Limited, unfortunately and then real-time four-wheel drive. It's a 12-valve, 660cc engine. Um, pretty decent fuel economy. These things only weigh 700 kilos and 
60-ish horsepower, 55, 60-ish horsepower. Uh, Mid-engined four-wheel drive and ready to be the canvas to be painted on. You want to lift it up, you want to put tire treads on it, like tank treads. You can do all that. You want to just leave it as is. That face reminds me of robots from the 1980s. It's almost like this thing could transform into a transformer, which I believe there actually was a K car or K van transformer. Okay, so now that we've seen the exterior, let's go over some of the details on it. Front bumper has a, actually the whole car in various places has some touched up paint that hasn't been done very well to touch up some of the damages. On the one hand, it's good to know that they were taking care of the car, but uh, the touch up wasn't particularly done very well. Headlights are nice and bright. Marker lights are nice and bright. Fog lights, good. And they are the fog lights for the limited version, I believe. Door mirrors say Honda, nice little uh, touch there. And coming down here, we got a little bit of a scuff here, like a dent. I think we're all pretty good here with just a little bit of damage for the decal. And then a at least a medium dent that's been touched up down here. Back bumper probably needs a repaint because there are a number of touched up painted pieces here. Some more here, some more here, some more there, some more here. It's like this guy had uh, backing into things as a hobby. He can put on his resume, as long as he's not looking for a pizza delivery job, but yeah. Uh, the back tint is bubbling just a touch in a few places. And we'll come into the interior in a second. Hinaga Honda, Honda Shosu Hinaga. I don't know what Honda Schuss is, but it yeah, sounds like the dealer's name potentially. And then down this side, we just have a little bit of damage on the sticker there. And it's looking good, like really no scratches or dents, just stuff like this in a few places. Some sticker damage there. Okay, why don't we have a look at the interior? We'll start off with the trunk. And this one has an optional, I think even optional past the limited, gathers audio unit in it. Um, usually the audio in a K-Van is sucky because K-Vans are uh, the least expensive vehicles that you can get. Everyone drives K-Vehicles. There's our neighbor's one. I'm not going to show it too much. But uh, K-Vehicles are ultra popular because of low insurance rates and low cost to run them, fuel, whatnot. Um, upgraded audio in one is a nice treat. There's a speaker box up here. I'm going to hop in so you can take a look. Honda speaker, a little cubby unit, and then gathers is like a, an upgraded, um, like in-house uh, tuning. And so very cool, a little, like it's not very well made. It's made out of wood and the staples for the vinyl aren't very good. And there's little tears up here, but it is cool. That's the official, never seen it before, including the little lamp here, which the contract isn't very good. But yeah, oh, this kind of stuff just puts fireworks in my brain. Never seen that before in a K-Van. Exported handfuls and handfuls of these. And if you're like a K-Van enthusiast, which some of the people that are buying these are, mine has the special Derek's Only Seen One speaker set in it. Super cool. Okay, onto the interior here on the side. It's dual sliding doors as all of them are. These seats generally not the best in comfort. Again, this is a K-Van, but they are moquette. This is moquette. Touch the moquette and you shall be impressed. Uh, these seats can stow and go. So you flip down and then shoop, they go down into this little section here to leave you with a completely flat bed all the way across. And then this pole here can flip up here to be a uh, cargo rack so that your boxes don't fly into the front. Uh, useful, cool, and having a full flat floor can be a game changer. Hence why, you know, this is a cargo van, first and foremost, just made more passenger car friendly. Now the seats in the front, seats in the back, both really clean condition. There is a little bit of a rip here. Headliner has some Disgusting damage up there. Not sure how you get that kind of damage. Needs to be cleaned. Okay, quick look at the front. 
There are a few areas of damage in the front dashboard I'll get to in a second here. All right, so let's head up there. Uh, curtain rock, by the way. Um, not a normal thing for these. Oh, we're getting a Land Cruiser as well. Uh, Hi. Huh. Land Cruiser time. So you get the Moquette in the door cards here as well. Crank style, so you can be old school. And because it's a K-Van, you can crank that one from the driver's seat, which is the biggest problem with crank windows, is you can't undo the one over there without it being quite a hassle. Uh, so we know it's been smoked in. Uh, it has a couple of cigarette burns here in the seat. They're not heavy cigarette burns, so they don't have a complete hole in them, which is nice. Uh, steering wheel here is a, a wooden one, and it's in good condition. You have tilt steering in this, which I don't think the regular K-Van's got, but I could be wrong about that. Revs up to 7,500 RPM, because it's more like a motorcycle engine, let's be honest, that you don't have a lot of mass in the pistons preventing it from revving higher. A couple of damaged vents. AC doesn't work. It does have AC, it's just not cold. And then a tape deck here. I suspect that this is an upgraded tape deck, because a lot of these K-Vans only have AM radio, but this one has like fade, balance, bass, treble, and uh, an actual cassette tape. You can get a cassette that goes in here that uh, hooks up via Bluetooth to your phone, which is pretty cool, and the sound quality is really not too bad. Some cigarettes. Blah, gross. A section of the dashboard is just missing, but the glove box works fine. And you get a clock. Yeah. Five speeds, real-time four-wheel drive, so nothing that needs to be uh, like selected um, or anything. And then the floor mats are in good condition because they have these big rubber ones, which aren't official. This is just like a aftermarket one. Keeping your original floor mats in good condition. Okay, has a fun little uh, hazard switch. Take a look, you go like this to turn your hazards on. Okay. Wow, that's, that's close. All right, so that's going to be all for this report. Uh, I need to help with these pickups and drop-offs anyway, so. <laughs> Line cruiser in your face for the ending. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video of the Acti. Look at this. Land cruiser versus Acti. Big boy versus teeny tiny little boy. And, uh, medium boy driving. Okay, that's all for this guy. As usual, if you have any questions, let me know. Look at those wheels again. Love it. Thank you so much for watching, and have a nice day.